I have been a cobbler by trade since I left school at the age of 14. I'm also pastor of the local Baptist church here in Leicester. Though I love this small congregation, God has laid on my heart a great burden for all the people and nations of this world. I have taken every opportunity to study their ways and customs and have for several years now pleaded with my fellow ministers to form a society for the propagation of the gospel to the far corners of the earth. Gentlemen, gentlemen, order please. Pastor Carey, please continue. It's all here no, in my inquiry. I've already laid out a strategy for a mission. Now here is every known country in the world. Its population, its religions, everything that we need for the formation of a missionary society. It's here. And this strategy, what is the essence of it? Yes, community. I believe that God is calling us to work in communities. We need land to survive on, with everyone working together as they preach the gospel. I see schools, colleges, hospitals, printing shops, the light of God reaching out to touch folk at every level. This is God's work. Let us expect great things from him, and let us attempt great things for him. Mr. Chairman, may I speak? Mr. Chairman, may I introduce Dr. Thomas, surgeon to the East India Company, recently returned from Calcutta. Gentlemen, the fields are white. Never was the harvest more ready for reaping, or the need greater for laborers to bring in that harvest. God has presented us with a task we must not ignore. Never. I won't do it. Dolly, listen to me. Don't just dismiss it out of hand. How can you even ask such a thing? You know I wouldn't ask if I didn't truly believe this is what God is calling us to. Well, he may be calling you, but he's not calling me. Do you really think I'm going to set off for India when our baby will only be a few weeks old? Mrs. Carey. Calcutta is a highly civilized place. I worked there as a surgeon for many years, and I assure you, there will be little more danger than you'd find here. We'll be working together, Dolly, with Dr. Thomas. It's everything I've ever dreamed of. That's all it is, William. Dreams. It sounds more like a nightmare to me. I won't go. I won't. Dolly, if I had all the world, I'd freely give it to have you and the boys with me. But my duty's clear. I must go. Mrs. Carey, what if your sister Kitty was to come? Would you think again? For five long and perilous months, we have struggled against wind and storm to reach our final destination in the Bay of Bengal. My wife Dorothy and her sister Kitty were finally persuaded to join us in this great work and I have spent much time consoling them during the journey and learning the Bengali language. Now, secretly, under cover of darkness, we have finally reached the shores of India. I cannot wait to begin the work we've been called to do. Namaskar, Thomas Sahib. Oh, sir, thank goodness you're here. But we must hurry. We must not be seen. This way. Come, please. This way. Come in. Come in, all of you. You, you are all most welcome. <laughs> William, let me introduce you properly. This is Ram Ram Basu, the best pundit in India. Namaskar, Sahib. Namaskar. This is my wife, Dorothy, and her sister, Kitty. And these are my sons, Peter and Felix. God has blessed you, Sahib. What's a pundit? A pundit's a very learned man. He taught me Bengali and he speaks lots of other languages. You are all welcome to our country. And you too, Peter Sahib. No, Peter Carey. <laughs> Sahib means sir. <laughs> now then, Basu, how about getting us to my house in Calcutta? I suppose you should better stay here tonight, Sahib. The East India Company have been patrolling nearby, and 
You might be seen. Why should we fear being seen? They've forbidden missionary activity here. Why? Map of trade might upset the locals. <sighs> so, what next? Perhaps a meal and a long, good sleep. No, no, thank you. Sahib, this is my very good friend Bhairav and his wife, Asha. Um. <laughs> oh, please let not the food get cold. Are you not eating with us? We've already eaten. He means they won't eat with us. Their caste system forbids them to eat with foreigners. We're outcasts. Well, surely we're all equal in God's eyes. It's our tradition, Sahib. God preserve us from traditions. And vanity. I don't need this anymore. Oh, but William... No, 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 Dolly, no more pretending. I've finished with it. Let the Lord use us as we are. So finally we have arrived in Calcutta, the city of my dreams. I feel like the Apostle Paul when he first saw Athens and his spirit was stirred within him. This is one of the finest countries in the world, full of industrious people so remarkably talkative and curious. The fields are indeed white and ready for harvest. William, relax. Look natural. No, 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 no. I don't want them, no. Hey, good morning, sir. Is all well? Splendid. Just enjoying the welcome. Tell her, Jow. Are you all right, ma'am? Yes, fine, thank you. You shouldn't encourage them. No, I, I'm sorry. Would you like an escort? Thank you, but we are fine. Where are you heading? It's all right, officer. They're with me. Company Surgeon Thomas, back from home leave. I think I stitched you together after your, um, disagreement with an angry husband. Rather anxious to keep it from the Governor-General, I recall. I must look him up again now I'm back. I think you can leave these good folk in my care. Good day, Mr. Fletcher. Do you really know the Governor-General? In a manner of speaking. Met him once at a funeral. Are we entering Calcutta as illegal immigrants and as liars? No, my dear, as ambassadors. You better get some food on for us, Gewa. That's a good chap. Come along, William. The servants will see to that. How can we build a community here in Calcutta with the East India Company breathing down our necks? We'll have to be careful, I admit. But it does have its advantages. What advantages? This house, for instance. This house is... It's obscene, John. How can we possibly justify it with our limited resources? And all these servants, they're so unnecessary. That, if I may say so, is the opinion of a man who has never lived in India. I dare say. But how much is this going to cost? Do you really think that people will accept us while we're living here in this mansion with half a dozen servants to wait on us, hand and foot? Chapati Sahib? No, thank you. You think they'll respect you more for living in a hovel? There's nothing noble about poverty. Perhaps not. But there's nothing to be ashamed of either. We came here with a clear plan for establishing the mission, and I just can't see where this place fits in. We simply don't have the money. 
We shall see. It's ridiculous, John. The way we're living will be out of funds in no time at all. Trust me, William. I know what I'm doing. I still think that we should stick to the original plan. To live modestly off the land. Out of sight and out of trouble. You wouldn't last a month. Of course we would. Nonsense. Well, then I must insist on having my share of the funds to use as I wish. But we're here to preach the gospel, John. In the byways and in the villages. Not in jail or on the boat back home. Now, I must do it. And if you won't honour that commission, then you'll what? I'll have to ask you for my share of the funds, John, though God knows that's not what I want. All right, if you insist. Go on, take it. What are these for? To sell. What do you think? But where's the money? Here! You've really no idea how to survive in this country, have you? Well, I wouldn't have chosen this way. Let me show you how things really work here. What does that show, Shay? Show you something. Huh? No, no, no. I'm a teen show. I can't be sure. I'm a teen show. 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 What's he saying? He says he will only pay 300 rupees. Tell him that they're the best quality from England, but we'll accept 450 rupees. Look. Best English quality. We cannot accept less than 450 rupees. Where else would you get anything this good? You're asking me where? There. My brother. He's selling scissors. And over there, my cousin. He's selling scissors. And over there, another cousin of mine. He's selling pen knives and scissors. And over there, goodness knows who's selling scissors. Shai, all from England. And all better than these. How was I to know there would be a glut of scissors and pen knives? How could you do this to us? We've hardly arrived, and already our money's half gone. I did what I thought best. Yes, well, your best has put a whole mission in jeopardy. And how can I preach the gospel if my family's starving? I wouldn't shout your intentions in public. If the wrong people here will be out of the country before you can say... scissors. Well, then I shall not say scissors. <laughs> <laughs> John, I'm sorry. We must find a better way to solve our differences. We certainly must. Come on. Dr. Thomas. Mr. Fletcher, what can I do for you? We have a warrant for your arrest. There must be some mistake. You are charged with leaving England with unpaid debts in excess of £200. Oh, come now, you can't really... This way, sir, if you please. Unhand me! You regret this! Don't worry, William. Soon have this sorted out. afraid not. What's wrong? John's been arrested for debts he failed to clear in London. And he spent all our money on <laughs> worthless knives and scissors that he thought he could sell at a profit. What's going to happen? I don't know, Dolly. And we can't afford to stay here. And if I'm caught preaching, I'll also be arrested and shipped back home. Even if I avoid that, 
we're on our own now, and that's not how we planned it. <sighs> how could I have been taken in by him? Oh, William. Wait. I think this must be it. William, we can't live here. Of course we can. We'll do it up. Oh, you can't mean that. I doubt it's even safe. By the time we've finished, it'll be a palace. Just wait and see. Come on. Open the windows. Peter, help Mummy with the bags. Kitty and I can sweep through and, well, in the light of day, you'll be surprised at the change we'll see. Why do we have to live here? It was much nicer in Calcutta. We can't afford to live in Calcutta. John managed it. John spent our money as well as his own. And look where it got him. Well, at least he had priorities. And so do I, Kitty. Just not the same ones. I don't want to live here. We don't have much choice, Felix. Kitty, will you see to a meal? I must feed Jabbies. It'll all work out, Dolly. Just wait and see. Basu, good to see you. Come in, come in. I, I got your notes, Sahib, but why are you living here? Because it's all we can afford. Never have I seen an English man living like this. Well, perhaps we can break a few more taboos. Basu, we need a plot of land big enough to grow our own food. Could you find something? I will try, Sahib, but... Such land doesn't grow on trees. No, of course not. But you will try. Of course. Oh, another thing. Would you be willing to help me improve my Bengali? Now, I'm afraid I can't pay you much, but... Oh, if... it will be my pleasure, Sahib. <laughs> Good. When can we start? There is no time like the present. <laughs> Bahera o Bonera. Probujishu Christu name. Aj ami ekane esechi. Arisici imonak ishore kotabulte. Ciao! Ciao! Ciao, ciao! What's your name? William Carey. Well, Mr. Carey, I hope you weren't doing what I think you were. Perhaps you'd better go home before I ask any more questions. What am I to do? I'm here to preach the gospel, and yet if I do, I'm likely to be put in prison or deported. How can you be so sure this is where God wants you? I don't know, Kitty, but it's a conviction that has grown within me, and I dare not ignore it. But you could serve him somewhere other than this godforsaken place. Kitty, my dear, I know what you're saying, but I believe this is where he has put me, and until it's clear we should move, then I must stay. Well... At least you could find some work and provide security for your family. God knows we need it. If only my family felt at one with me in the work, I would find a great burden removed. I'm in a strange land, alone in the midst of many people. I have no Christian friend, a large family to feed, and I'm finding it difficult to provide for their most basic needs. Have I so misunderstood God's will? Since moving to Bendel, Dorothy and the boys have all been suffering from dysentery. Dear God, what is happening to us? There are times we despair even of life itself. What 
are you doing up? Can't lie in bed all day. But you're not well. You should rest. And who'd look after everything? Well, me, of course. Then it's a pity you're not better occupied than picking flowers. Well, at least they brighten up the place. It'd be better to have the house cleaned, the washing done. Oh, that's not fair. You know I'm doing all of that. And what about the cooking? Meals don't make themselves. Can't you see there's no food in the house? <laughs> place is a tip. It's no wonder we've all been ill with such filth everywhere. Oh, and that's my fault too, I suppose. I'm doing my best. Why don't you ask William why we're in this hovel with no food? He brought us here. Can I have one, please? No, I'm afraid not, Peter. Please? No, no, come on. Come on. Oh. Daddy, Soap! Asha, good morning. Good morning, Saeb. I was just coming to your house. Hello, Peter. Saeb, I've got some vegetables from our garden. I thought your wife might like them. No, no, I couldn't possibly. Please, Saeb. If your wife and the children don't eat, they'll fall ill. Yes, but you need... We have we... plenty. I know you need it. It's too kind of you. I... I don't know what to oh, say. It's nothing. You're always welcome. And this pizza is for you. Just a few sweets I made this morning. Pizza? Hmm? It's a fine thing when we have to rely on charity. My dear, it's God's provision, whether it comes from our own labours or the hand of a friend. Let's just be thankful. It's humiliating. Thank you, Father, for your gracious gifts. May we rejoice in your goodness and continue in your service. Amen. Amen. I think, William, you could give more thought to your family. Kitty, don't you think I want what's best for all of us? Would any father want to see his family living in squalor, not knowing where their next meal will come from? I just don't see why we have to live in such a slum. Because I must serve God where he wants me, not just seek out my own comfort. But it's not just your comfort. There's your family as well. The bread of adversity is never easy to swallow. Well, perhaps you should think twice before making others share it. from England and our three months here. I have tried to prepare myself in every way for the task of ministering to the people of India. But in truth, nothing could have prepared me for the horror I have witnessed today. A young woman burnt alive on the funeral pyre of her husband. Please, God, give me the key that will unlock the fear and superstition that drives them to this terrible act. 
and to share with them the love and freedom that is in Christ. William. I think you better come. What is it? I don't know. Some dreadful disease, I've no doubt. And for what? Not now, Kitty. Get some cold water and a cloth. Dolly, my dear. Snakes? Where are they? Hmm. Mustn't touch. The children mustn't touch. Shh. It's all right. There are no snakes. Shouldn't listen to you. We'll all die. Shh. Don't fret, Dolly. I won't let that happen. This is enough, William. You must get back to England. Not now, Kitty. When will you see what you're doing to us all? Kitty, this is neither the time nor the place. When is the time? When we're all dead? I don't know what to do anymore. With Dolly struck low, I can only pray that God will restore her to health. Where do I go from here? How I long for a renewal of the vision that brought us to this land. Saheb, Saheb, I have heard wonderful news from my cousin. A piece of land is available in the Sundarbans, ready for growing crops with a bungalow already built. It could be available rent-free to the right person. And I'm sure you are a very right person, Sahib. Oh, this must be a gift from God. <laughs> <laughs> Basu, bless you. <laughs> The Banglo is not free. What? Yes. It's the home of one Mr. Short of the East India Company who is who is out at the moment. Excuse me. Can I help? I'm Charles Short. William Carey, sir. And my family. You're Mr. Short from the bungalow? Yes, with the salt department. I hadn't expected to see any English folk today. We're a missionary family, sir, expecting to have found the bungalow empty. We had been assured that we could live there. Ah, well, I had intended to move, but the company insisted otherwise. Look, um, I've plenty of room. You're welcome to stay with me for a while. It'll soon be dark, so let me help you with your bags. Oh, please, allow me. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Hori. So, you're a missionary, Mr. Carey. Yes, the first from our Baptist mission. Well, there aren't too many people here unless you want to convert the tigers, well. <laughs> tigers? Yes. Twenty people were killed by them last year, which is why so many people have left the area. Oh, but they needn't be a problem. So, now you're here, what are you going to do? 
Well, I've been allocated some land which I intend to cultivate, but my real task is to preach the gospel. You say there are not many people here. Oh, they'll come back. They always do. Look, I shan't say a word to the company about your plans, but I'm not a religious man, so please don't make me a target. Agreed. Good. Tomorrow we can decide where to build your house and plant your garden. Now, Miss Kitty, perhaps I could uh, tempt you? How can you smoke that awful thing? Who's troubled most by mosquitoes, you or me? I don't know why they find me so attractive. I think I could go. Oh, what a beautiful sunset. Yes. That's what I was saying to Kitty. We're not seeing many of the locals returning, Charles. Oh, them all come, once they see you're not afraid of the tigers or the night spirits. Mm, I hope so. But being a missionary does require people to preach to, you know. Mind you, what solved my dilemma of what to say to the company? Hmm? Oh, by the way, this came for you earlier. You really don't have to do that. Sunil does all the washing. Well, old habits die hard. I have an old habit of taking a stroll about now. Will you join me? Well, I, I have just finished. And Dorothy won't need me for a while, so yes, I'd like that. So, how do you like India? It's getting better. But I'm sure I wouldn't have come if I'd known how hard it would be. So why did you? For Dolly's sake. She wouldn't come without me, and I couldn't see the family split up. And I was finally persuaded by Dr. Thomas. Ah. I know him from old. <laughs> On top of everything, we discovered we were illegal immigrants. Though all William wants to do is preach. The company's only interested in one thing. If missionaries upset the locals, trade would suffer. You know, I didn't want to come to such a remote place. But now I'm glad we did. So am I. It's nice here. I feel safe. As long as you're not too venturesome. Even I don't go far without this. It's not just the tigers, there are snakes too. Oh, Charles. It's all right. I'll look after you. What? Where? There are two of them. They were chasing us. They are huge ones. It's all right, boys. You're safe now. I know you're concerned, but it's rare for a tiger to attack humans. Tell that to the 20 men killed last year. Look, I received this from John yesterday. Where from? Prison? Apologising. I know, my dear brother, the extent to which I have failed you, and can only ask for your forgiveness and the chance to make a new start. Not before time. What's he after? He's been offered a job as a manager of an indigo factory at £250 a year. Well, let's hope he can keep it. And his employer has offered me a similar job at Mudnabutty. Mudnabutty? And what do you know about indigo? You're a missionary, not a factory manager. I'd have to learn. 
but at least I'd have a ready-made congregation there. You'd have a salary too, uh, and security. How many more moves will there be? Perhaps this is from God, Dolly. Just think of the advantages. But we've only been here three weeks. Oh, Kitty, what next? Kitty? This may come as somewhat of a shock, but today I asked Kitty to marry me and she has done me the honour of accepting. Charles, Kitty, my dear, congratulations. So if you go to Mudnabati, you'll be without Kitty. God bless you both. Oh, Kitty. Perhaps now we can finally settle down. For so long, my days have been clouded with heaviness. But now I begin to be like a traveller, beaten out in a violent storm, who, with all his clothes dripping wet, sees the sky at last beginning to clear. They look content. They're secure here. They enjoy helping you. You're looking better too. I try. But I miss Kitty so. I know, my dear. I know. Jishu Jokun Bolichilin, J. Amra Shotto Janbo, Ibong Shotto Amader Shadin Kurbe, Takun. Tini Samosto Kusansko or Dormio Retiniti Cheki, Shadin Hobar Kotha Bolechilen, Ja Amade Kritadash Kore Rikichi, Shadinata Jodi Abnara Petician, Tahole Ame, Apna der Shate, Amon Agjoner, Kashe Prartono Korbo, Ishor Apna der Asher Bad Karume. Basu, why don't they respond? With practice, they will understand you better, Sahib. You mean I'm not very good? It's hard for you, and there is much tradition to overcome. Well, I wanted to ask you something. Now, just after we arrived from England, I came across a funeral at which the widow of the dead man was burned. It's a custom we call sati. Well, what makes the women do it? Are they forced? Not all. Hindu belief that life is a constant cycle, that death is followed by a rebirth, is very powerful. A supreme act of sacrifice in this life will guarantee a better reincarnation. The belief is often much stronger than the fear of pain or death. But the woman could be quite young. Would the family approve? They would expect it. The wife would bring shame on her whole family if she didn't follow the custom. And is it always followed? No, not always. It depends on the family and uh, how devout they are. But it's not commanded in the Hindu scriptures. No, but it's tradition. Most people don't have the Shastras, and certainly not in Bengali. Well, then we should give them the Shastras, as well as the Gospel in Bengali. Then they'll see from their own scriptures that Sati is not a religious obligation. What is it? He's got a high fever. 
What should we do? Well, how should I know? John would know what to do. So would Kitty. Please, God, don't take the life of my little boy. Please, in the name of the Lord Jesus, don't let him die. William! William, you must come! He's getting worse. What can we do? We've done all we can. He's in the Lord's hands. tradition that leaves me alone to bury my own dear son. The Indians are afraid of losing caste. If they touch the dead body of my dear child, they become outcasts. It is a high price to pay, and I cannot blame them for that. How I hate the superstitions that so possess them. Have I so misread your will? Is being in India no more than the pursuit of childhood fantasies of travel and adventure? Have I sought to justify my own desires under the banner of Christ's commission? Oh, wretched man, to have inflicted such suffering on those I love most dear. And yet, I can't put out of my mind the millions who live in darkness of tradition and superstition, which only the light of Christ can drive away. How can we love others and not wish the best for them? Every villager has the right to read for himself of the light of Christ in his own language. Dear God, is that why you've brought me here? To give your word to the villagers in their own language? and teach them to read it. I can't blame you, Dolly, for wanting to go, or for doubting him. It's not easy to have faith in the midst of suffering when there's no proof of God. But despite everything, we must trust. We must have faith 
even if it's all we're hanging on by, in spite of everything, I choose to believe in him because I know I'm here for a purpose. How can we leave India? Thousands of women die on their husbands' funeral pyres through fear and superstition. I can't abandon them in our darkest hour when they live in perpetual darkness. I can never leave India until the light of God's love drives out that darkness. That's why I'm here, Dolly. To light a candle in a dark place. Where is Kerry, say? Go in the back. Mr. Carey? Yes? Uh, William Ward, sir. Just arrived from England to join you. From England? Did... And you, uh, did you... Sent who, by who... the Society. And I bring you their good wishes. Oh, thank God. How, how I've prayed for this day. <laughs> thank God! <laughs> <laughs> What's your trade? Well, I was a master printer. A printer? I've got the whole of the New Testament waiting for you. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> so, Lord Wellesley is accusing me of harbouring dangerous French spies. I am instructed to interview them and report their particulars, sir. Well, do remember that though the East India Company controls much of India, you now stand on Danish territory. Surrounded entirely by land controlled by Britain, any trespass outside Serampore would put them into his lordship's jurisdiction. And any harassment of those under the protection of the Danish crown would be seen as very serious. His lordship feels that papists could be French, sir, and that with Napoleon frustrated in Europe, he could turn his eyes on India. He needs to be sure that these new arrivals are not French spies. Well, to put your mind at rest, Mr. Fletcher, let me introduce you to our papist priests. One of their number, a Mr. Ward, is absent, visiting a friend. But the others are here. Ah, Mr. Joshua Marshman and his wife, Hannah, Baptist missionaries from England, not papist. The others are resting. Perhaps you'd like to meet them and the children later? No, sir. That won't be necessary. But I would remind you, the company sees missionary activity as counter to local custom and therefore a threat to civil order. Your company is interested only in trading rights and maximizing profits. What happens here is the concern of the King of Denmark, and it is to him alone that I answer, and not the British Governor General. So you're really a printer? I've been for 15 years. Well, you must come and settle here. Now, I've got a small press that you can set up, and then there's your companions. They're teachers, you say? They could start a William, school. William, William, the company won't let us out of Serampore. I only slipped out secretly. You must join us. With Danish protection, think what we could achieve. Well, it's tempting, but my wife... She all right? She's paid a high price for coming here. Is she often like this? Well, some days she's, she's well and others... There are women with us who would love her, William, and give you and the boys all the support you need. But what has her sacrifice achieved, Will? Even the society, they think I'm more interested in being a merchant than a missionary. I think they only want to hear about people flocking to the Lord. Yes, well, they haven't exactly been doing that. Does that trouble you? It troubles me that perhaps I've missed my calling. Perhaps I failed with my preaching because I should be concentrating on the written word. Maybe I'm a planter, not a harvester. You know, so many people live in bondage. We're chained 
to what we don't understand. We're chained to what we do understand. We're chained to ignorance and superstition. And God forgive, we're chained to tradition. Now men impale themselves on hooks. Babies are sacrificed in the Ganges. Women die on their husband's funeral pyres and it's all in the name of tradition. And yet, we have the very thing to set them free, the word of God. If we could just give it to them in their own language, I think of it, Will. On your arrival here, it gives me such heart. It all begins to make sense. You know the hymn, Will? I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Give me a month, and God willing, we'll be together in Serampore. <laughs> Today, we arrived at the tiny Danish settlement of Serampore on the banks of the mighty Hooghly River. I scarcely dare to hope that the vision that has been lying dormant for so long may at last be pushing up its shoots into the light of day. Dear God, let it be now. Will! <laughs> William! Dorothy! You made it! <laughs> Weary and dusty, but safe. Uh, welcome. <laughs> Welcome, all of you. Uh, your rooms are ready. Come on in. Oh, be careful with those plants. Joshua, Hannah. <laughs> Meet William and Dorothy and the boys. Welcome to Serampore. <laughs> Thank you, Joshua. And Hannah. <laughs> you must meet Dorothy. Welcome. I'm so glad you're here. Joshua and Hannah are teachers from Bristol. We need them. <laughs> Then we heard you'd thrown away some of your clothes to make room for even more lovers. <laughs> well, may you laugh, but Mr Roxborough will be delighted with them for the botanical gardens. I met him last week and told him that you were a gardener. I'm hoping that he'll let me have a few bulbs. Then we can have a real English garden. Or a Danish one. We wouldn't have this house if it wasn't for Colonel B. Well, the Danish governor. He wrote to welcome me as an honoured friend. Oh, he's a good man. He's offered to build us a church and provide premises for a school. Excellent. Now, I can write and translate and do the gardening. And Joshua, I hear you can preach. And Will, you'll work the press, the Bengali Testament, think of it. And Hannah, you must start your school. If we plant faithfully, then God will bring the harvest. And we'll pull what we earn. The press will make a profit. And the school. There are plenty of European parents happy to pay for their children's education. Can you imagine what we've been through these six years? I mean, not a single convert and fearing that God had abandoned us or, or that I'd misheard his call. I don't know why we've suffered so, but I know God's never been far away. There's been a reason for everything. And we shall find it here in Serampore with all your ideas and enthusiasm. Any cuttings you want, just take them. Well, thank you, Colonel. You're most kind. Ah, let me introduce my other guest. Lady Charlotte here gives valuable help in running our little colony. Uh, Mr. William Ward. Enchanted. Mr. Ward. Mr. William Carey. Delighted to meet you. Welcome, Mr. Carey. And welcome to Serampore, gentlemen. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Please. Well, I hope you will enjoy living here, Mr. Carey. Though I'm afraid we can't compare with the splendors of British Calcutta. On the contrary, Lady Charlotte. A colony that offers the sharing of the gospel seems to me far more attractive than one that doesn't. I hear that in England you were a shoemaker, Mr. Carey. Not a good one, sir. I, I mostly mended them. Charlotte, Mr. Ward here is a master printer. We were talking earlier of the print shop he wants to set up. Printing fascinates me, Mr. Ward. Then as soon as the press is set up, you must come and see it in action. I should like that. What do you need most, Mr. Ward? 
Well, Mr Carey already has a press. We just need ink and paper and fonts of type. You might need to make your own type. But I can recommend a merchant in Calcutta for the rest, once I've issued you with Danish passports. <laughs> Thank you, Colonel. But you might as well have both God and the Danish crown to protect you. I thought I'd find you here. Would you like to walk? Joshua's out visiting. Seeing parents who've put their boys down for the school. I want to open a girls' school next, then one for the Indian children. Yesterday we met a lovely brown Why Indian. did you come here? We were teaching in Bristol and heard how you'd all come. But you wanted to come? Yes. We knew God was calling us. It's all right for you. You can read and write. You can be part of Joshua's work. But it was your example that encouraged me to come. When I left England, I said goodbye to everything I knew. I don't even have my sister to talk to now. I'll be your sister, Dorothy. I'm just a millstone round his neck. No. William loves you. Everything is slipping away. And when I think of tomorrow, there's nothing there. He won't still love me, Hannah. I know he won't. <laughs> oh, it's good to be able to leave an apprentice to look after things. Who's that? Young man called Felix Carey. Says he wants to be a master printer. Really? <laughs> What's he doing? What every apprentice should be doing on his first day, sweeping the floor, polishing the press. <laughs> ah, is this it? Mr Carey. And you must be Mr Ward. Yes, uh, good morning. I've been following your exploits with interest, Mr Carey, and that of your associates. You not only entered India illegally, but for several years have moved around preaching and converting the villagers. Well, at least it's correct to say that I've preached. That's against the law, Mr Carey. But I obey Christ's command that we preach the gospel to all nations. The law here is that of Lord Wellesley, and he doesn't allow illegal immigrants to upset the locals by preaching customs which are alien to them. Our mission here you is You are here without permission, and clearly on an illegal enterprise. I must ask you both to come with me. But we're residents of Serampore and not under the authority of Lord Wellesley. But this is Calcutta, not Serampore. And this is a Danish passport, which, unless I'm mistaken, guarantees us the protection of the Danish crown. Tread carefully, Mr Carey. Tread very carefully. <laughs> in such a state. Don't you think she'd be better cared for elsewhere? What are you saying? Well, that I, that I put her in an institution? It might be an act of love. When I married Dolly, it was to love and cherish in sickness and in health. Till death, Joshua. Oh, till death. Shall I love her more by assigning her care to strangers? No, I could never put Dolly away. Never.
300 rupees? Every month. And with the demand for places growing, that will increase. So as long as the numbers are high in the English schools, the fees will continue to fund the native school? Yes. Joshua? Do you like it? Well, yes. <laughs> Can't we start a class for the local girls? I'm sure they'd come. I don't think parents would approve of their daughters learning to read and write. Excuse me, I'm wanting to enroll my son Nishi in your school. Of course, come in. I'm a friend of Mr. Basu, and we also knew Kerisa have when they live near Calcutta. You'll be pleased to have your son here. Thank you, Mim Sahib. Do you by any chance have a daughter? Yes, she's six. If we had a girls' class, would she come? I don't know, Mim Sahib. Her father may worry she lose caste. Oh, excuse me. William. I think you two have met. Asha, what are you doing here? Mr. Basu found a job for my husband here. That's wonderful. How good to see you. My son, Nishi. Nishi? Namaskar. You wait till you see the boys. You won't recognize them. I was so sorry to hear about Peter. You've had a terrible time. Yes. It's been worse for Mrs. Carey. She. She took it very badly, but thank you. The schools are growing. I work unceasingly at learning new languages and translating the Bible into them. The print shop is already supplying all its own materials, and soon we shall be giving to the people of India their own great works of literature and the word of God. Look, William. Look. I'm nearly there, Will. After all this time. We're nearly there. <laughs> There's a few corrections, mind. <laughs> I, uh, I hope I'm not intruding. Oh, no. This is an epic moment. Look, our Bengali Testament. Oh, wonderful. What skills you have. They're God's gift, and he'll use them. Now, let me show you around. Everything that you see here, paper, ink, type, all of it is made here in Serampore. Remarkable. And you print so much. This press will be the very heart of our renaissance. With all these languages, it's more like a Pentecost. <laughs> They're beautiful. We're even accused from England of uh, inventing languages so that we can claim to print the scriptures in them. Oh, you must ignore such ignorance. They can't even begin to understand what their missionaries achieve. Well, these are my missionaries. And I trust the Lord to use them. <laughs> William. Mm. Yes! Savitre Karmadaini Idam Margam Om Namaha Sri Suryaya Namaha Om Namaha I think that wave was for me. John, what are you doing here? I'm visiting an old friend. <laughs> it's good to see you. How are you? Perhaps a little humbler than last we met. Let me have a look, Krishna. Can you move your arm? No, sir. Uh, uh, You've dislocated your shoulder, and to put it back will be very painful. Do you understand? Yes, yes, sir. Hold him tightly. This won't be easy. <laughs> ah! oh, oh, oh. Now, that will be painful for a while, but it will get better. Thank you, sir. God will bless you for your goodness. He'll bless us both, not for our goodness but because he loves us and because his son died for us. I've heard that before, but isn't the death of God's son a shameful thing? God's love for you, Krishna, proves you're very precious to him. Now, go home and rest. I want to see you in a couple of days' time. Will you come and see me at the mission? Yes, sir. Krishna, can you read? Yes, sir, I can. 
Then take this. It's the book of Matthew Sai, and it tells how Jesus was hurt and killed and won a mighty victory over death so that we can all live forever with him. Thank you, Sahib. I will read it to my family. Jishu jahun chitkar kore nijen atta ke shamorpan kore chilen. Takhun shatopoti ebong jara tar shonge Jishu ke pahara dit chilo. Tara bhoomi kompo ebong or jaja ghot chilo dekhe bhishon bhoi pe bollo. Shutti, ini ishwar ir putro. তিনি যদি ঈশ্বরের পুত্রই হন তাহলে নিজেকে ওদের হাতে নিহত হতে দিলেন কেন এখানে লেখা আছে ঈশ্বর তাকে মৃতগণের মধ্যে থেকে ওঠালেন যাতে তিনি কে তার প্রমাণ পাওয়া যায় আরো লেখা আছে যারা অনুতাপ করে তার আত্মা তাদের অন্তরে বাস করে আমি কখনো শুনিনি যে যারা অনুতাপ করে তাদের অন্তরে বিষ্ণু বা শিবের আত্মা বিরাজ করে তার মানে কি আমাদের প্রত্যেকেরই ক্ষমার প্রয়োজন It's God who's opened your eyes and has forgiven you. Yes, Sahib. Krishna, it's good you're here. I must leave tomorrow, but my prayers will be with you. Thank you, Dr. Sahib. Now, will you share our fellowship meal? Yes, I should like that. You know what this might mean. They will say I have broken caste. We are all equal in God's eyes. And we recognize no barriers of caste or race here. So let's eat our meal and rejoice. Thank you. Responsible for this. This man is Firingi. He's a traitor. So what is his crime? He has eaten with the European missionaries and has broken caste. This man is under the protection of the Danish crown, as is everyone here. How can he be a traitor by having a meal with my friends? Sahib, this is our way. Nobody can be a Christian and eat with foreigners without being cast out I and... forbid you to harm this man or his family. Anyone who does will answer to me. Now home, all of you. Go, go, go. Krishna Pal, on the confession of your faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, and at your own request, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Oh. <laughs> Krishna, you know there is nothing sacred in this water. Only in the miracle that has made you clean. Yes, Sahib. And I will pray that my wife and my family will also be baptized. And God will answer your prayers. But you must trust him. Yes, Sahib. Ishwar, you are a Mongol. Ishwar, you are a Mongol. Come. Welcome to our fold. I am so happy for you. Thank you very much. The chain of caste is broken, my friend. Welcome. Yes, sir. Yes. Welcome. God bless you. Bhagavan, tomar bhalo korun Krishna. Don't know what. Don't know what. God bless you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. I'm very happy. Thank you. Ishar tomar mongol korun. Ishar tomar mongol korun. Bye, Rav. It's good you're here. Yes, Sahib. 
I think I want to know more about your Jesus God. Well, then he's already at work in your heart. Seven years, and at last, the New Testament in Bengali. Years of planting and waiting for the shoots to grow. And look, Indian brethren baptized and others soon to follow. The Bengali scripture, the schools, the work among the poor and the sick. God is at work. And through his grace, the harvest has begun. Spurred on by the prospect of a new church in India, we are building more schools to prepare men and women for leadership. Over there? Right over there, beyond the pond. Look, this is what it's going to be like. It's oh. wonderful. You must come and visit the school when it's built. Thank you. You've achieved so much already. With a lot of help. William, you must come. It's Dorothy. Excuse me. Thank you. Dolly. Dolly, can you hear me? I'm so sorry. <laughs> I am the resurrection and the life, said the Lord. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. We commit the body of our dear departed sister Dorothy to the earth and her soul to Almighty God. May she rest in peace and perpetual light shine upon her. Ashes to ashes, and dust to dust. The Lord giveth, and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. That's all for today. I'll see you all again tomorrow. Off you go. There you go, boy. Put your things on there. That's it. You've worked very hard today. Asha! Hello. Hello, Mim Sahib. Mim Sahib, I've talked to my husband. He's agreed that his daughter may also come to school. Wonderful. Our girls' class starts on Monday. Will you bring her then? Yes, Mim Sahib. Good. And how is Bharat? He's well. He's reading the Bible with Krishna this afternoon. Krishna wants him baptized. And what about you, Asha? What do you want? I don't know. I'm just frightened about what may happen. Good morning, Mr. Carey. I was hoping to have a word with you. Why, yes, of course, Mr. Fletcher. Oh, thank you. How kind. Quite a little industry. Yes, well, there's plenty to do, printing all these translations. Mr. Ward's away, so I'm trying to fill in for him. You don't mind if I continue, do you? No, of course not. Thank you. Uh, uh, perhaps you could just... Uh... Thank you. Lord Wellesley asked me to visit you. He is very impressed with your work in translating so many of the Bengali classics. Oh, how kind. Now, where's that? Uh... Ah, you've got it. Thank you. <laughs> he is unhappy that so few of the company's recruits are familiar with the local culture. Mm -hmm. Few even learn the language. Well, I've been saying so for years. So he has founded Fort William College. And I am here to ask for your support, Mr. Carey. What? You're asking for my help. For you've always opposed our mission. Mr. Carey, I very much regret that. But I know Lord Wellesley has the highest regard for your language skills, 
and the balance you have achieved between religious and secular literature. So much so that he invites you to take on the teaching of Sanskrit and Bengali in the college. You'd, of course, have pundits and scholars to assist you in this work. 500 rupees a month. I think what the mission could do with that. And recognition by the company would remove the constant threat of arrest we've been living under. How much time will you spend there, William? I'd leave by boat Monday afternoon and return Friday. It's not something to rush into. I came to India with great visions of converting the Hindus with my preaching. My preaching. I mean, six years before the first convert. It's clear now, that's not the gift that God has given me. My gift is languages. And that's what I must do. Study, translate, and teach. Then, when the Lord multiplies the harvest, they'll have scriptures to feed on. I'll have time and facilities to do all of those things at Fort William. And the opportunity to be alongside the seat of government. If we're going to play a part in the abolition of sati, we need a voice where it'll be heard. And then, a college of our own. A college? Church needs leaders, so we must have a college to train them. Printing the word, education, the abolition of sati, the three pillars of our mission. I've been asked to visit Lord Wellesley next week, if I accept his offer. Whatever you decide, we're with you. This new status not only provided finance for the mission, but it gave me the opportunity I have longed for to fight those injustices that have tormented my heart for so long. I think you'll get your ban on Sati, but it will take time. You must persuade people by argument and not by force. If only Indian voices were heard. Perhaps there's one. A Brahmin financier in Calcutta. A scholar, too. He's spoken out against Sati and maybe your man. Raja Ram Mohan Roy. Excuse me. Namaskar. Can I help? I'm looking for Professor Kerry. Oh, but he's away until next week. I'm his pundit. Is there anything I can do? I have read a pamphlet of Professor Kerry's against the practice of sati. It is indeed a subject on which he feels strongly. And he shows an unusual understanding of our shastras. Yes, and he is presently compiling a translation of the Ramayana and the master Sanskrit dictionary, showing how all our languages are related. Really? Then he's indeed a friend of India. I look forward to meeting him. May I know who called? I'm Raja Ram Mohun Roy. Oh! While the work of the mission continues, Every Monday, I rode the 16 miles downriver to the city of Calcutta and return the following Friday. My time at Fort William is filled with lectures and more translation work, not just of the Bible, but many of the great works of Indian literature. Namaskar. Namaskar. I long wanted to meet you, Professor. I'm Raja Rammohan Roy. I'm delighted to meet you. Thank you, Professor. We have much to talk about. Of course. There is so much I would also like to discuss with you, though we may not agree on everything. Well, then, let's uh, concentrate on what we can agree on. Now, you know that I'm opposed to sati, mm -hmm. and I know from your writings that you feel the same. And we both know that the Hindu scriptures do not require it, and yet the East India Company won't ban it on the grounds that it's a religious tradition which cannot be interfered with. Can we work together so that your religious leaders and the Governor-General can see that they're wrong. Certainly, but it will not be easy. You see, the view is deeply held that a woman who dies on her husband's pyre mm. is doing a supreme act. Her release from earthly sufferings and rebirth into a new life is a very, very powerful force which will not easily be overcome. But many such sacrifices are not voluntary. Indeed, but we shall both fight this battle knowing we do so together. 
Professor, your love for our country and our people make you a true friend of India. destroyed years of translation work. Preparation of an entire Sanskrit dictionary, all our woodcuts, type founts, and a new consignment of paper from England. It has been devastating, and the whole community has suffered with it. How are we to understand such things? And where do I go from here? There is nothing I can do but start all over again with God's help and the encouragement of those around me especially dear Charlotte. <laughs> this is a shock to us all. How would it reflect on the mission? Couldn't it wait? William, I understand. But what will others think? What about another three months? Then may it shall be. Congratulations, Sai. Thank you. I'm so glad you came. I have a news for you, which I have kept specially for your wedding day. What's that? I'm wanting to be baptized, Sai. I've given my life to Christ and must now take this step. Oh, bye, Rav. Bless you. <laughs> I couldn't have had a better wedding present. Thank you. <laughs> the college, which was founded three years ago with 37 students, is holding its first graduation ceremony in the grand new buildings at Serampore. It will be open to all. No caste, colour or country shall bar anyone from admission to this college. And I pray that the blessings of God may be mightily upon it. William! William! Congratulations. Well done. Oh, William, your dream has come true. Not quite, my dear. But here's the man who may help it to. Professor Kerry, Mrs. Kerry, I congratulate you on your achievement. Professor, I'm most impressed. Oh, well, thank you. But I take little credit. The house you see here, God has built. I thought it was our Bengali builders. <laughs> well, certainly they played their part. It's so strange, Professor, that takes someone from so far away to spark our renaissance. We are in your debt. You're very kind. But you know the breakthrough I'm waiting for. 
a little patience, Dr. Kerry. I'm sure we will succeed. Please, God. सत्यकार भगवान खोज पे I've got some terrible news. My ref has been murdered. Oh Lord, no, no! What about Asher and the children? Where are they? The children are with Krishna and Rasu. No one knows about Asher. See, Bhairav's parents have taken his body to the village to prevent there being a Christian burial. And? No one knows where Asher is. We've looked everywhere. No one knows. Or no one's sane. You must pray she's not being held against her will to be sati. Oh, please, God, no. No. His funeral was secret. They probably feared that if there was sati, the mission would suspend its good works. And if not, their traditions are weakened. So no one say anything. Oh, no. Even Krishna can't find out. We have a martyred brother and we're powerless to comfort his wife, even if she's alive. You have influence. But not power. Would anyone raise an eyebrow if Wellesley marched into this tiny Danish settlement in response to my interference? Women are dying needlessly, thousands of them. It's murder. I know the figures. You drum them into me often enough. People killed in religious pilgrimages and babies thrown into the river. But this is not our country. Oh, so we're not meant to care. Care? You think I don't care? The East India Company is right. You can't come to India with its centuries of civilization and tell them that they're wrong and that we know best. If I ban Satya, the riot spread of the Serampo, Wellesley would roast me alive. Does that mean we do nothing? No, it does not! Spurred on by fear of the tragic death of Asher, we took our cause to the highest authority in the land to fight against this wicked practice of sati. Ram Mohan Roy did much to persuade not just his own people, but took our cause to Parliament itself. At Serampur, we used every means available to bring this evil to the attention of those who had the power to stop it. And then, one Sunday, as I was preparing for the morning service. William, I should go ahead with these. All right, I just need to change a few things here. For you, Dr. Carey, from the Governor General. Oh. Thank you, Krishna. Joshua. Joshua! He's done it. After all these years, he's done it. Who's done what? The Governor General. He's abolished Sati. Look, he wants me to translate it and send out copies immediately. Oh, no. oh thank God. We must tell everyone. No, you tell them. If I delay, who knows how many more women may die? Oh, well, Joshua, will you preach for me? I certainly will. Imagine what our service was like. We shed tears of joy. You should have been there. There's nothing I would rather have been doing than translating the governor's letter. Just think of the lives it will save. Dr. Carey! Asha. 
Oh, thank God. Thank God. I had to wait until it was safe. Well, you're safe now. You're amongst friends. So will the press, the college, the abolition of Sati. You've achieved your three aims. Who said I had only three? <laughs> now, it so happened 